Good morning. Welcome back to Winding Hills Golf Course for the next lesson in Power Lessons from the Heart of the Game, Living Golf. I've chosen today the 16th hole at Winding Hills for this lesson. The reason is I'm going to be talking today about the power of emotion. Um, you can, your emotions are critical in how you, how, you, how you perceive things, how you work through your game, and how you stay stable through the entire activity of playing golf. We have to remember we're always playing golf. If our emotions get out of check, we will start to get a little bit hyperventilating, a little bit nervous, and start to not play golf, but start to make golf happen. So our emotions have to stay calm, cool, and collected, particularly during the process of setup and getting ready to hit. Many things can affect the emotion. Um, I chose this hole particularly this morning because we're looking directly into the sun. Well, that's a glorious thing to be doing, but it's a very difficult and challenging shot, and it can have an effect on your emotions. Your emotions can either be charged by that, being accepting that when you look up to see the shot, you're not going to be able to see it, and you can overcome that emotionally by accepting the feeling of the swing. So it's a very good exercise to hit into the sun like this emotionally. It brings you in touch with that emotional response. So I'm going to hit a shot here and see if I can feel the distance. I pretty much know the distance of this hole, so I've chosen the proper club. I have trust in that club, so I have to activate that trusting feeling, that, uh, that completely, almost complacent, but really charged at the same time. It's a fine line of emotional content to make this shot. Um, usually I do this pretty well. You never know, though. It's early in the morning. Um, so I'm going to hit a shot. If it feels pretty good, we'll leave it at that and we'll go down and take a look at the result. In truth, the sun is so much in my face, I won't even be able to see initially where the ball landed. So that presents a major, major challenge. So I'm going to really set my emotional intent here to accomplish something by feel only, almost as if I was blind. I love that challenge. I love any challenge in golf. So let's give it a go and see what happens. After looking into the sun, you're going to have a little bit of sun blindness to line up on the green. You square the club, that's where the trust comes again. We trust. That's going to set our emotions in an in a accepting position, as I talked about in a recent video, in an accepting position to allow that club emotionally to flow through the ball. Let's give it a whirl. Okay, club feels square. My posture feels good. We'll let this happen. Felt really good. Very solid. Didn't feel contact with the ball at all. So we probably are okay. Let's go up and see what we had and then respond to that. Okay, as I said on the tee, I was totally blinded by the sun here, so I had no idea where the ball even landed. I had to feel the distance. I knew the distance from playing the hole before, so I took a very soft shot in. It's a relatively short hole, and hoped that I would feel the direction, which was pretty good, except I pulled it a little to the left. One of the reasons you'll go to the left on this hole is because the entire green slopes severely from left to right. So there's a tendency for your emotions to get overcharged on the tee and respond too much to that left to right, and that's exactly what happened here. Now I have a very precarious shot. This is probably one of the most difficult shots you can ever play in golf. This is a very, very severe downhill run to the hole. Easily you can either leave it very short trying to be too careful or hit it long or even scull it across the green. So you have to have a perfect stroke through the ball. That'll come from practice. You need to practice these kinds of strokes. And if just a little bit of practice once or twice a week in your backyard, just chipping and pitching can be very helpful for a successful, emotionally wonderful day on the golf course. So don't forget to rehearse. I'm going to set the club. Before I do, I'm going to take a couple of practice swings to feel the flow through the grass and also feel the distance I want the ball to fly. 
it should sh uh, go only a short distance onto the green. Everything else is by gravity flow down to the hole. Let's give it a go. Now that's one of the things that can happen. Okay, I got a little too careful and the ball just barely got onto the green. Now, if I were to do that, I have emotionally a disaster on my hands because I'll be emotionally frustrated from that, which will carry over into the next shot, which would be a downhill putt from there. I could easily make a four on this hole, perhaps five, maybe six, depending on how I responded emotionally to that mistake. So we'll try another one. And we're going to try another one feeling the difference in the shot. That was about perfect. Let's see how that comes out. You can see how slowly it rolls down, trying to get it in that three-foot circle. That's not bad at all. Now, I have a little break there that the ball came off a little quick, so it didn't take the entire break. So I'll try one more. That should be real good. Let's see how that comes out. Should take a little break right there. Still a little long. So you see how soft I hit that ball, but yet those are makeable putts. This one is hardly a makeable putt. So I could be emotionally, if I were playing a round of golf, I could be very emotionally disturbed by that mistake. That could literally affect the entire round of golf from there. So we have to put whatever happened behind us, look forward to the future, and stay focused. That's so, so important to overcome that emotion. So there's power in the control of the emotion. It's been proven scientifically that we are more motivated by emotional response, heartfelt emotional response, than we are by intellectual determination. So we can overcome emotion, try to by determination or clear intent, but if we don't get emotionally connected to the nature of the shot, we're going to fail. I'm going to hit those putts uphill to talk a little bit about the emotional response from there. Be right with you. All right, I've come up pretty well here. I'm about a little over three feet from the hole, just at that outer perimeter of the three-foot circle. And I have an interesting situation that you'll run into if you're playing in the morning or the latter part of the evening. I now have, when I'm standing over the ball, the sun is going to be back on me. You can see in this shot, the, the shadows of the trees coming across the green. It's quite a beautiful picture to see that. So you can see my shadow back there. Okay, so I'm right into the sun again when I make this putt. However, I'm hitting into the shade. So this is another situation where our, emotion, our emotions can really get disturbing. Uh, we start to question um, intellectually, what am I supposed to do here? You have to emotionally respond to the stroke, the feeling of the stroke. I'm almost straight into the hole. It's a little uphill. When you're hitting an uphill putt, there's a tendency for the ball to stay, stay straighter so you can trust it a little more. You're not as worried on that downhill pitch. There's a degree of worry that affects your emotion. This is really an easier putt, but you can miss these just as easily if you take them for granted. So emotionally, you get yourself set. Physically, you get yourself set. Intellectually, you get yourself set. So you're working every shot in golf, mind, body, and spirit. Spirit is the feeling. It lies in here, not in the head. So I'll come up and set. Trust comes in very heavily here to trust the stroke. I set, square my blade, and I make my stroke. And did you see that rim the hole? That's how easy it is to miss this putt. That was a perfect example. I was sure that ball was in. Now, rimming the cup like that, how do we react to that is the key. If I react to that, I just made a very good putt, but it went in a little bit quick and rimmed the cup, almost 360 degrees around the cup. So that's a perfect example how I could decide now myself how to accept that emotionally. So I'll hit another one from the same spot and see if I can quickly overcome that emotional 
feeling I had of that miss and let one go in the hole. Missed it on the left side. Why? Because I was so concerned with doing the same thing from the right side. So we'll give it one more try. Can't promise I'll make it because I may be affected myself right now by emotion. Trying to be right. Anytime you set yourself up to try to be right, you're in big danger of being wrong. So you have to let, never try to make. Let's give her a whirl. And we get it, okay? So how I set my emotions there determined whether I would or would not get that putt in the hole. But I was not trying to make the ball go in the hole. I was letting it go in the hole, so emotionally connecting. That ends this video on emotion, power of emotion. Thanks for being here.